Hello everybody and welcome to the Sart for the second event of the VDV Endurance Series. After a year off, the competitors in GT, Protos, single-seaters, Funyos and the VHC are back at the Bugatti circuit. It's a 4.185 kilometer long track which promises to be the scene of great battles and spectacular racing. Let's have a look in more detail now. Constructed in 1965, pushed by Jacques Finance and Jean-Marie Lelièvre, who was president of ACO, the Le Mans track is exceptionally sinuous. Used for, among other things, motorbike racing like the Grand Prix de France or the 24 Hours, the Bugatti circuit also hosts events for historic cars and trucks. There's so much history here, the track even shares a section with the 24-hour circuit, which is 13.629 kilometers long. It's the bit from the Chapelle corner and going through the first chicane. It promises to be exceptionally spectacular. Three single-seater races are on the menu this weekend. We start with a surprise and pole for the young Dutchman Richard Vershaw in front of the Australian Alex Peroni and the Russian who drives with the Ukrainian license Alexei Chuklin. Fourth went to the Frenchman Oscar Arcila in front of Gilles Herriot. When the lights go out, the pole sitter on the right of screen messes up and leaves the way clear for Peroni, Chuklin and Arcila, three of the strong men at the start of the season. After two laps, Peroni leads from Chulkin, who's under threat, then overtaken at the Chemin au Berth by Oscar Arcila. Peroni leads from Arcila, Chuklin, Herio and Vershaw, down in fifth after that poor start. Soon the battle between the Australian Peroni and the Frenchman Arcila becomes the main event. The RC Formula driver sets the fastest laps and closes on his rival, eventually overtaking on lap six. In category B for cars built before 2010, Arno Choque leads from Spaniard, Naomi Fusta. Back to the front of the field, Arcila is leading and heading for the win, his second of the year, ahead of Peroni, Chuklin, Rochaud and Erio. Immense joy for the Frenchman, disappointment for the TS course driver. A few hours later, and fine drops of rain are falling on the track. Some competitors decide not to take their spot on the grid in order to change tyres. That's the case for the MP Motorsport teammates, Rochaud and Chuklin, who are meant to be going off from the front row. Instead, they go from the pit lane, a daring choice for the 20-minute race. Space on the grid then as Arcila makes the fastest start, only to be overtaken by young local Antoine Robert, just 15, and Pietro Peccinini in the 73. As of lap two, Arcila gets back in front and starts pulling out an advantage from Antoine Robert. Having started from the pits on wet tyres, Alex Peroni is stuck in the peloton, he finishes only 10th. Richard Vershaw is flying though, on slick tyres, the MP motorsport driver is four seconds quicker than his rivals. He's rapidly catching the leading trio of Arcila, Robert and Peccinini. On the track, which is drying all the time, Arcila has to manage his tyres, but also keep attacking in order to hold off the speeding Vershaw and Gilles Erio, who's also on slicks. In six laps, the Dutchman is closed to within 3.2 seconds of Arcila, and he overtakes easily on the following lap to head towards the win, the first of his career. He'd only got into single-seaters at the start of the weekend. He's in front of Erio, Arcila and Creed, and the youngster is congratulated by his team. The starting grid for the final race is the same as that for race two, with the MP Motorsport teammates on the front row ahead of Peroni and Arcila. Off the start, Richard Vershaw slides too much and gets overtaken on both sides on the straight. We're with him, and he's fifth behind Chuklin. At the Dunlop chicane, Gilles Erio leads from Peroni and Arcila, but on the Musée turn, Erio can do nothing to resist the attacks of the two men. We see them hit the outside from Vershaw's camera. And so often this season, it's Peroni and Arcila leading the dance. In the RC Formula pits, the tension is skyrocketing. Who will win this duel? Just a few metres left to cover for Alexander James Peroni. Nothing will stop the championship leader from heading for another win, his first of the weekend, ahead of Arcila and Vershaw on the podium for a second time. Peroni leads the overall standing, seven points clear of Arcila, 54 ahead of Gilles Herriot. After the single-seaters, it's the Funyos who take to the Le Mans circuit. With a record 38 cars entered this weekend, the formula put in place by Eric van der Viva and Yves Oran hasn't stopped seducing. For the first of the three races at the meeting is Raymond Rie on pole in front of Alain Boulin and Yves Oran. Jean Kelly, the 24 champion and current championship leader, starts from last after seeing his qualifying times annulled. When the lights go out, Rie makes an average start and is overtaken by Eric Oran, Boulin and Girardot. 
HMC driver Loyac lost a cylinder in the formation lap that's reduced his power. Edouard Erry, the former rally driver making his Fano debut this year, makes the most of it to lead the way from Oran, Boulin and Girardeau. Despite his engine difficulties, Rie stays sixth. With difficult weather conditions, there are traps on the track, some competitors get caught out, the safety car comes out, the gaps are reduced, there are only three laps left and Erry still leads from Oran. Rie is already back in third. The restart takes place a few seconds later, we'll take it in the company of Edouard Erry. Careful on the first chicane, look to the right, and Romain Rie hits the outside, closely followed by Yves Oran. The SP0524 driver is back in his favourite position, first of course. Behind, Rie, Edouard Erry is trying to reclaim second before the Chemin au Berf. We go on board with Cyril Denis, the Funio 5's leader. Malinconi attacks the inside and the VUSA driver makes it stick. This so close to the end of the race. Malinconi, Denis, Gardin, the leading trio doesn't change all the way to the line. In spite of a mechanical problem, Romain Rie puts in a strategic race, making the most of the safety car. He wins from Alain Boulin and Yves Orn, so joy in the HMC Loyac team. After a race two which he dominated, finishing 30 seconds clear of Alain Boulin and 34 ahead of Edouard Erry, Romain Rie, the 2015 runner-up, starts from pole for the third and final race. Where was Cyril Denis, the pole sitter in F5 for the start? An impeccable start for the driver from the start, though he was soon restricted by the relative lack of power in his F5 compared to the new SP05. Rie in the 24 holds on to first in front of Alain Boulin, Edouard Erry and Yves Orn. At the end of the first lap, the four leaders have got away. 11th in the first race, 4th in the second. Jean Kelly is fighting with Cyril Denny, the leader in F5, for 5th. The 2014 champion tried to dash the inside but went too wide. In habitual errors from Kelly, who ends up in 11th after picking up a penalty at the end of the race. Ouye isn't worried up front, he leads by a few seconds from Eri and Boulin. But Eri spins to lose the benefits of his good start. Everyone manages to avoid him. No worries though for Ouye, who is moving serenely towards his third win of the weekend. The SP05 with the Peugeot 250 horsepower engine perfectly manages to avoid the pitfalls of the Bugatti circuit. With a hat-trick here, Romain Ouye is in control of the championship, clear of Kelly and Oran. In F5, Garda and Malinconi are level. Now on to the VHC, the historic competition vehicles. Porsche, Ford GT40, Lucchini SP91, March 81S, Alfa Romeo, Jaguar Type E and TVR Griffith 200 are giving joy to the spectators. Let's get inside the beautiful yellow car from 1964 alongside Eric van der Viva for an inside look at the track. I'm on the straight and I'm flat out in fourth. The car started to move around because it's an old car with small tyres and we're going quickly. I take some of the pace off, get onto the kerb, brake, go into second gear because I need to set a time here. Now I'm back into third and we're coming up into the Chapelle corner with heavy braking. Braking with a TVR from 1964 isn't easy and we need to respect it. I get back on the accelerator, the car is gripping and we mustn't touch the curb. It's going quite well, I stay in third and then at the entrance to Musée I go back into second in order to try to stay on the racing line. The car moves around a lot, I'm accelerating a lot. Third, then I go into fourth to ease the pressure on the engine. We mustn't get it wrong, and if we forget to go down the gears, then we end up in the gravel. The engine brake is as important as the brakes. The trajectory is good, and we accelerate well. I go into third, and then fourth. We're going at about 6,000 revs per minute here. I have about 400 horsepower for a car that weighs 900 kilos with bike tyres and no brakes. It's a lot of fun. Left, right in third, and that's good. I accelerate flat out to come into the S Bleu corner. Here are two choices, third or second, and I got a bit surprised here. Là, je me suis fait un peu surprendre, mais je crois que c'est parce que je vais trop vite. I think it's going too quickly. 
This next corner, the raccordement, you have to get through in one go. You need to roll into it and then attack the straight again. You need to be careful because if you lose grip here, then you end up in the wall on the right or on the left, and that's no good. In 1992, the very first VDV sports race was held. It was for historic competition vehicles. 25 years later, the cars which have marked motorsport history continue to take each other on this weekend at the Bugatti circuit. We're going to try to find out more about the Jaguar Type E from 1961. Oh, it's a dream car, legendary and revolutionary for its era. It's special because it's so rare. The chassis is flat, and these are the first Type E's from 1961 with the flat chassis. It's every child's dream. It's a dream for all those who love old cars. We work on them and you get there. I look after them and repair them. I'm a doctor for old cars and I'm specialized in English cars. It's an inline six-cylinder car. It has a 3.8-litre engine and generates 290 to 295 horsepower. The engine was prepared by the old owner who did coastal races in Italy. When we bought it, we had to change it a bit and change the way it was prepared to make it usable in races. Just a few changes and preparation, a minimum of 120 hours just to get the two or three oil leaks sorted out, modify the brakes, the exhaust, get it up to the norms and make it reliable. When it's well balanced and well prepared, then it's all good. The problem is the brakes. The brakes are too small for the size of the car. Once the preparation has been finished, it's time to take to the wheel of this beautiful English car. We're focusing exclusively on racing on circuits in an ancient car. On a circuit, there's adrenaline, that feeling, it's a different world and it's pure happiness. Le Mans and the Bugatti circuit, the venue for the second round of the VDV Endurance Series 2016. The proto drivers have a four-hour race which carries a coefficient of one. After Barcelona, the CD Sport team shone again in qualifying with the cochet kirchdoffer duo. This time the 31 starts from pole ahead of the norm of two, winners of the previous event and the 42 of Palmyra. Amidst all the agitation on the green flag, Ludovic Cochet holds the lead ahead of Alain Ferté. The 23 cars get into the first chicane and come through it. Very quickly, the strategy thought up by Damien Bellot comes into play. Ferté comes into the pits for his first handicap trip through. He's not the only one because Patrice Lafargue in the Ligier 17 does the same thing. After 25 laps, it's the Norma 21 of DB Autosport driven by Jordan Perroir that's leading from the two Norma M20 FCs of CD Sport. The championship leaders are further down in the standings, but they've already done their three trips through the pits. In the prestige category, the 56, driven by Christophe Tardieu, is currently leading from the 26 of Team Excool and the 42 of the Palmyra team. Very quickly, the first pit stops happen. There's the usual excitement as the mechanics get to work and the driver changes occur. Let's make the most of the interlude to get the thoughts of Ludovic Cochet, who made a very good start up against Ferté. I made a successful start. The last one I did, I totally messed up and went from 1st to 15th. I couldn't do worse than that, and everything went well. I managed to hold it for a lap. It's the first time I've competed with an aerodynamic car, and it's phenomenal. It gives me a crazy amount of pleasure. The car goes quicker than me for now. We're having fun. I'm not trying to win. We're here to have fun. I'm here with Remy. He's a gentleman. After this important stage, and under two hours from the end, the standings have changed. The DB Autosport team is still leading, but now it's the 22 that's taken over from the 21. The Delafosse, Danny Lou, Peterson team lead the race from the 32 of Maulini, Bolbezonson and Foubert, and the two currently driven by Philippe Iliano is on the provisional podium. After such a start, Daniel Bassora, the team manager of DB Autosport, who has three new lineups this year, isn't anything but overjoyed. In the close season, we were working on relationships and the team's getting stronger. We've got new normas, new material, and a motivated team. In this race, we see the 22 is leading. There are still a few pit stops to go, but we can tell this car performs very well. 
Yeah, of course, the 22 is able to compete on an equal footing with the two of TFT. I think that the teams are just as good as each other. It's racing, and the race is long at four hours, so we'll see what happens. We're still hopeful. Over at Prestige, things are going superbly for the British team X Cool with Duncan Williams and the young Jordan Sanders, who are leading the category from the Norma 6 of Bezo, Tyrion, Caillon, and the Ligier 15. In the IDEC pits, Gwenelle Dolomier is looking closely at the performance of his teammates. A special mention to Team 1 of Steve Girard and Gregory Strybig. After a title in single-seaters Category B with Oscar Arcila last year, the Alsatian team have progressed by buying two new Normas. We're surprised at the way things are going. There's remarkable reliability here. I think there have been no abandonments. The car works very well. Now, in this VDV series, we know the atmosphere is good, but does one enjoy being at the wheel? Yeah, of course. I see the difference compared to single-seater races, which are much more aggressive. Here, the drivers are very respectful. Respectful, yes, but there's a ferocious battle up front. Under 15 minutes from the end, the TFT team of Iliano Ferti and Villarino is in control of the race, ahead of the 32, that still needs to come into the pits once more. They do that five minutes before the end. Kevin Bolbezanson doesn't want to lose a single second in order to come out in front of the 22. In the end, he does manage to hold second in front of the DB Autosport car. Despite an exhaust problem that handicaps him at the end of the race, Ander Villarino brings the car home. That means another win for the TFT team of Tony Pereira. The team is stacking up the wins. A second straight win. These colours are bringing you luck. Yeah, I hope so. This win is above all down to the mechanics because I went off in qualifying and they put together a perfect car. This win I'd like to dedicate to Margot because Margot is a very courageous little girl and very strong and she'll pull through. I'm certain of that and I'd like to dedicate the victory to her. They put me at the start line and I did all the work. They make me angry. Of course, I'm joking, the car was great. The mechanics and the team did an extraordinary job. They put the car back together really quickly. That wasn't easy and the car was perfect. We just needed to do the job and do it the best we could. Yes. <laughs> the happiness is on all the faces on the podium for the second event of the VDV Endurance Series Proto category. A second win of the year for the Norma 2 in front of the 32 and the 22, and the win for the Ligier 26 in Prestige. The last race of the Le Mans weekend, 20 cars entered in GT Turismo P3 PFV, a four-hour race awaits the drivers. In the P3 PFV, there's a Ginetta 123 with a pole for the 57 in front of the 55 and the 52. In GT, AF Course managed to head the reigning champions, the Ferrari 1, third for the Dodge Viper of the AN team. Here at Le Mans, to prepare for the 24 hours, Frederick Sosse and Christophe Tanso are on the front row in their LMP2. Away we go for this VDV in Le Mans. On a tortuous track and with uncertain weather, there's scope for a lot of drama. At the first chicane, they all managed to get through, no problem. Some lock up the wheels a bit, but there's nothing too serious. After the first half hour, the Morgan 84 leads from the Geneta 57. The 52, followed closely by the Ligier GSP 3888 of Graf Racing and the 13 of Inter Europol competition. In GT, the 51 driven by Mario Cordoni is 7th overall and in front of the 1 of Thierry Pierrier. We go on board with Thierry Pierrier now. Watch out, something's happening for the championship leaders. Yes, there's a back right puncture for the Visium team and it's tough for the Ferrari 1. Thierry Perrier has to go back into the pits right at the start. Third in GT for the Renault RS01, currently driven by Eric van der Viva. As was forecast, grey clouds turn up above the track and the first drops of rain fall. The red and yellow flag is waved, the driver's way. The teams are getting ready and there's tension in Ginetta. The first cars come into the pits to get the wet tyres on. And that's the case for the Ligier 13, the Renault 11, the Vortex 19, the Porsche RMS 56 and the Ginetta 50. Almost all the competitors make the most of this storm in order to change tyres, all except the leader, Lawrence Tomlinson. It's a risky strategy, but one that could pay off come the end of the race. Two hours from the end, Tomlinson is in front of the Ligier JSP 13, 
driven by the Poles Michowski and the German Martin Hipper. Now it's running pretty well for us. Um, a bit tricky with the weather conditions at the moment. Uh, we changed for rain tires. We're not sure if it was the right decision up to now. So we'll see where we are after the pit stops and the handicap stops. You are both engineer and driver. Is it something special for you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I was driver in former times, uh, running Formula, car, uh, Formula cars. And now it changed. I was 10 years engineer and now in the ELMS I'm working as engineer and driver coach and here as a, as a driver. It's quite interesting was to see both sides. The new team of the Ligier P3888 is Eric Trier, Toma Dagano and Fabrice Rossolo. They're a solid third. More drama in GT with the Ferrari 51 having a few problems with the power assisted steering. That with under an hour left. Jean Bernard Bouvet attacks hard and is closing up quickly on the Italian Montemini. Third for the Dodge Viper 70 of the AN team in front of the Renault RS0111 of Van der Viva and Karagati Han. For a first race, the Chinese Swede Luin Han is delighted. Excited, excited, very excited. Yeah. Uh, the competition, very uh, you know, hard. Yeah, very hard. And uh, first time uh, in German race in the GT car. Uh, so tough for me as well. I have a uh, lot of uh, racing friends uh, from China. They uh, love to come to Europe to, to experience the, uh, the, the racing, uh, you know, the, the race. And he's not the only driver delighted to be here at the VDV. We caught up with Lawrence Tomlinson just after his stint. Perfect driving, good strategy. The team LNT holds on to first place overall. Under an hour out from the end. I think the Ginetta is easier to drive and faster than the Ligier uh, J, J, JSP3 or JPS3. Um, but we have to go faster because we use more fuel. So, you know, the race is quite exciting. I think Eric has the series well balanced now. The whole team at V2V do an amazing job. Um, the series is great fun. We have four Ginettas uh, G57s running here. There'll be more cars joining, more G57s joining as the as the year goes on, as we build more cars for this series. So we're really excited for it. And I think it just looks such a really nice, exciting spectacle. Uh, nice sounding, good cars, great fun. There are only 10 minutes to go. Jean-Bernard Bouvet is in charge in the GT category. With the power assisted steering problems, Montemini has to be content with second. Totally dominant in P3, the pole position and the win for Ginetta. They did it in style. Oh, it's great, great to win in a Ginetta. Le Mans of all places as well. So. You know, Lawrence won us that race. When it rained, everybody pitted for, for wets, but he stayed on slicks. So we sort of gained a pit stop advantage. So, uh, no, I just drove around and stayed off the curb. So it was quite, my job was easy, thanks to, thanks to Lawrence. <laughs> Advisium, a second win in GT for the last race of the Ferrari 458 GT2. It wasn't all plain sailing. No, it wasn't straightforward, especially at the start of the race with Thierry. We had a big puncture and lost a lot of time. After that, Jean-Paul did a great stint, drove well and I carried it on. I got a thought for Andrea though at AF course. I think he had problems, he wasn't able to finish off the way he would have wanted. I'm happy to have won at home here at Le Mans, it was important and it did us good. Lawrence Tomlinson and Mike Simpson are happy on the top step of the podium. Confirmation of the LMP3 PFV standings, the Ginetta 57 in front of the Ligier 13 and the 888 at Graf Racing. The Inter Euro Pole Competition Team leave Le Mans as championship leaders. The final podium of this French round with the GT category and the success of the Visium team. A double for the Ferrari 458 Visium in front of AF Course. Third for the Dodge Viper in front of the Renault RS01 of AB Sport Auto. In the championship, Visium are dominant. Thanks to everybody for watching. Le Mans is over and now it's off to the Paul Ricard circuit on May the 22nd for the third round of the VDV Endurance Series. In the meantime, don't forget to follow us on social media and stay loyal to Motors TV.